The fame Vogue editor Anna Wintour looked visibly annoyed at Kim when she arrived extremely late to Paris Fashion Week over the weekend. Kim left guests waiting for her entrance at Victoria Beckham's spring summer show, which was held in an 18th century Parisian townhouse. This was once home to the late Chanel designer Karl Lagerfeld. Along with Kris Jenner, Kim was seen awkwardly scuffling to her front row seat about 47 minutes after the show was due to begin, which caused a significant delay. The thing is that the organizers had to wait for her appearance before they could kick off the show. So it's no wonder that Anna was a little upset. I mean, she was almost an hour late. A video of the incident has since gone viral on Twitter and it really put things into perspective. When Kim first arrives, she warmly greets David Beckham and seems to say something along the lines of, I feel so bad. At this point, you can actually see Anna Wintour getting even more annoyed. She was sitting right next to David Beckham and she very clearly chose not to welcome Kim as she walked in. Instead, she sat coldly with her arms crossed while she took a seat beside her. To make matters worse, there was another video filmed after this initial snubbing and it looks like Anna chose to move seats momentarily right after Kim sat down. Even if that was just a pure coincidence, it seems like she was genuinely really upset and didn't even want to sit next to her anymore. Eventually, she does return to her seat though for the remainder of the show, which is when we see Kendall Jenner walking the runway. But what is it that actually happened here and how did things get so awkward between them? As we know, Kim has worked with Anna several times over the years. In fact, she was on the cover of US Vogue like three times. But it has been said that their working relationship hit a very public road bump last year. Because last year at New York Fashion Week, a very similar thing happened where Anna appeared to snub Kim while she was greeting Sarah Jessica Parker. At that point, she completely ignored her even when she was standing right there. While it doesn't seem like Anna would go out of her way to be unkind to someone, being ignored like that can really hurt. And simply not acknowledging someone's presence generally tends to get your point across. To add to that, there were all these reports ahead of the 2023 Met Gala that she had decided to crack down on the guest list and not invite the Kardashians. Of course, Kim, Kendall and Kylie still ended up scoring invites, but even then people thought it was just in response to all the backlash. Since 1995, Anna has decided who makes the guest list for the gala, which is held annually on the first Monday in May and it helps to raise funds for the Metropolitan Museum of Arts Costume Institute. For years, the Kardashians have been invited and are well known for not disappointing in the wardrobe department. But for whatever reason, reports emerged that they were no longer going to be invited. Chloe has previously shut down rumors of not being invited to the gala. So back in 2019, she took to Twitter and responded to a fan who suggested that she might have gotten snubbed. And she said, absolutely not true. Then during last year's series, The Kardashians on Disney+, Plus, she revealed that she turned down invitations in the past because of her anxiety of appearing on red carpets. Kim had a similar experience the first time she attended the Met in 2013. She said she actually cried after the event because she didn't know anyone and she was so sure that no one wanted her there. The thing is, she'd been trying to score an invite for years, but the fashion world did not accept her. And when that happens, there's no amount of money or fame that can help you. In Kim's case, it's because she just wasn't taken seriously. Even the late Karl Lagerfeld seemed to have an issue with her and he had no problem discussing it. When Kim was robbed in her Paris hotel room in 2016, Lagerfeld was one of the first people to criticize her. He spoke to the Telegraph and said, I don't understand why she was in the hotel with no security. If you're that famous and you put all your jewelry on the internet, then you go to a hotel where no one can come near to the room. You cannot display your wealth and then be surprised that some people want to share it with you. Despite his harsh comments on what would have been a very traumatic experience, Kim still remembered him fondly when he passed away in 2019 at the age of 85. She posted photos of the two of them on Instagram and wrote, we lost a true legend. You were such an inspiration to the world. You shot my first fashion shoot and I was so nervous to work with such an icon. The world is so much nicer because you existed. I am beyond honored to have met you and had the opportunity to work with you. You are so loved and will be missed. Although not everyone was happy with the way that she went about it, considering that most of the photos Kim posted were more like modeling photo shoots and she neglected to include Carl's name in the caption. But hey, I guess it's the thought that counts. Did you hear what Kim Kardashian just said about Pete Davidson? On Thursday's episode of The Kardashians, Kim admitted to her sisters Kylie and Kendall that she jumped into another relationship so fast when she started dating Pete Davidson. This was right after her divorce from Kanye West. Looking back on that relationship now, Kim said, it got my mind away from stuff and that's not a way to run from things. She said she developed a new mantra and told her sisters, it's better to deal, heal, then deal, heal, and then feel. Kim and Pete met on the set of Saturday Night Live. She later said that she felt a spark when they shared a kiss during their Aladdin comedy sketch, but their relationship was never very popular with fans. Some people thought it was a little cringy that Kim spilled a lot of details about their sex life. This was when she confirmed that Pete certainly does have that big D energy. While some people appreciated the honesty, others thought it was all a bit too much. Then there were the tattoos. 
tattoos. Fans thought it was a huge red flag that Pete had tattoos of Kim at all four of her children. And now that they've broken up, it seems like it was a poorly thought out permanent decision. One of the tattoos he had dedicated to her said, my girl is a lawyer, which he got to celebrate her passing of the baby bar. He also got the names Aladdin and Jasmine with an infinity pool between them, which is a reference to their first kiss on SNL. And he even got the initials of her four children in a tattoo that reads KNSCP. But of course, for her part, Kim didn't get any cheesy couple tattoos. And that really says a lot about the differences between them. But one of the biggest complications of their relationship was her ex Kanye West. For some reason, he was so threatened by the idea of his ex-wife moving on with Pete that he made it his mission to try to make his life hell. And at that point, it was probably easier for him to get out of the relationship than stick by it. Despite the controversy surrounding Kanye's actions, Kim now confesses that she doesn't want to look back at her experience with him negatively. In the latest episode of the show, she said, I'm not going to take every experience and bad thing that happened to me and carry that into my life. What am I supposed to be learning from this? How is this going to make me a better person? On last week's episode, she broke down in front of her sister Chloe over Kanye's outburst. The main source of her pain was just seeing how different he had become. She says that she will always keep looking for that person that she married inside of him, even though he's so different now from who he was when he met her. She said she will always love and hold on to the Kanye who she remembers and that she'll do anything to get that person back. Kim said, I feel so bad for him. I don't even think he feels bad for himself because I don't even think he knows how. What became apparent though is that she hasn't spoken to him about his anti-Semitic online rants just because she was worried that he will go off on her, which is really sad when you think about it. There doesn't seem to be any hope of the two of them reconciling, but the fact that Kim is still able to co-parent and just focus on the kids after everything that's happened is really incredible. So rumors have been swirling about Kim Kardashian and Tom Brady, despite there being virtually no evidence that they're in a secret relationship. That we do know that they were at the same party over the July 4th weekend. Sources have now given mixed information about their supposed relationship, with many saying that the two stars are not actually dating. But others have suggested that there could be something going on, and there is certainly interest on Kim's side. Now the celebrity gossip site Dumois shared a follower submitted photo of them together at Michael Rubin's pre 4th of July party earlier this month. A source later spoke to Entertainment Tonight and said, Kim and Tom spend time hanging out and talking at Michael Rubin's white party and having a good time together. It's been said that they were super flirty with each other and were seen during the day on the beach together and again dancing at night. Another source insisted that their time together was far more limited than it was made out to be and that they barely even spoke at the party and just said hello. It was also said that later in the evening, Kim had some liquid courage and was overheard telling her friends that she had a crush on Tom. Though others said that they are not romantically involved and they're just friends who have a lot of respect for each other since Kim is focused on her kids right now and her business and not really interested in a relationship. It was also said that Tom actually spent the evening with Emily Ratajkowski instead and they were together most of the night. Quote, they didn't leave together but if anyone was getting close, it was them. With Kim though, the two of them have become pretty friendly recently as it was said that she's looking to buy a vacation home in Tom's neighborhood at Baker's Bay and Gulf Ocean Club. The neighborhood is an exclusive members only residential community in the Bahamas. Kim flew to the Bahamas just recently and was spotted touring the resort. A source close to the star told page six, Kim and Tom are friendly. She phoned him and asked him for advice on Baker's Bay. She's very familiar with the community. She's been eyeing property there for quite some time. So if she moves to that neighborhood, maybe their friendship could turn into something more. When it comes to celebrity dating rumors, it can be so hard to separate what's true from what's just online gossip. The only thing we know for sure is that Kim and Tom are both newly single. The NFL star divorced his wife of 13 years supermodel Giselle in October of 2022, while Kim ended things with Pete Davidson in August that same year, after they had dated for nine months. Since then, she's pretty much kept her dating life under wraps, only mentioning a mystery man named Fred on the Kardashians. She said that he measures up to all of her standards and thanks to the show, we now have an extensive list of her preferences. She called it her manifest list, which features all the things she's looking for in her next romantic partner. The list is very extensive and it goes like this. Number one, protect me. Number two, fight for me. Number three, good hygiene. Number four, calm. Number five, no mom or dad issues. Six, patient. Seven, supportive. Genuinely happy for me. Successful and good teeth. She went on and said, spontaneous, fun. My friends and family love him. Someone that can be a role model for my kids, especially that my boys can look up to. And no heavy baggage because I have enough. Taller than me, someone that likes to work out, a motivated person, and an independent person that's not clingy and has good taste. Then once Kim was finally alone in the professional, she added one 
one more thing to that list, and it was no balding. Unsurprisingly, this seemed like it might have been a jab at her ex. As we know, Kanye has always worn a closely shaven head, and he eventually went fully bald in April. So it's easy to see why that comment might have come across as shade. On the flip side, if she is looking for someone with hair, then Tom Brady might just be the way to go. And now, why is Kim Kardashian being slammed as a bad actress? Well, it's all because of her performance on the new season of American Horror Story called Delicate, which is now being dragged by fans of the series. Kim has taken on her first scripted TV performance in the show where she plays a sassy publicist named Siobhan Corbin, but it appears some American Horror Story fans weren't really impressed with her acting chops because they then took to social media to express their distaste. And people did not hold back when it came to talking smack about her acting skills. They wrote things like, Kim sucks at acting, why is she on this? ruined it for me. Another person wrote, I feel like I gave the new season of AHS a valiant, open-minded watch, but I can't. Kim K is an objectively terrible actress. But the good thing is that it wasn't all negative. In fact, some fans genuinely thought that she did a pretty good job. One person wrote, I don't care what people say. Kim Kardashian is doing amazing, sweetie. Mad props to her acting skills. Kim had a memorable first few lines in the episode called Multiply Their Pain as her character met with her client Anna Victoria Alcott, played by Emma Roberts. American Horror Story Delicate will return next week on the FX network, and fans of the show are super excited to see what happens with that. But Kim's acting is far from the only drama on set. In fact, her co-star Emma Roberts is now the latest celebrity to be outed as a bully in real life. Angelica Ross has been speaking about her experience filming American Horror Story 1984, and she's now decided to expose a lot of people involved with that, particularly Emma Roberts. She claimed that she irritated almost every actor on the set of the series. Angelica said, Folks seemed like they wanted to fight her all the time because she was playing psychological games on set, like she was playing mind games with people. She also claimed that Emma was transphobic towards her, and she described an incident where the two of them were having a conversation with director John J. Gray, when Emma complained to him that she was being mean to her. Gray tried to defuse the situation by saying, okay ladies, that's enough, let's get back to work. To which Emma apparently said, don't you mean lady? Which obviously implies that Angelica was not a woman because she identifies as trans. When speaking about that incident, Angelica said, my blood is boiling because I'm like, if I say something, it's going to be me that's the problem. I know this because there was someone who spoke up about what she was doing and they got repercussions from it. Not her, they did. So she chose not to report it because she felt that she would be retaliated against. After that incident, apparently the two of them didn't speak for the rest of their time filming. Elsewhere in her life, Angelica claimed that Emma yelled at directors and tried to compare salaries with her co-stars, all because she was trying to make it very clear that she was number one on the call sheet, and she was the one in charge. Now, as shocking as that story was, there has been an update since we heard it. So Emma Roberts got word of that story and decided to apologize. Angelica said that Emma contacted her to talk about what went down. She jumped back on social media and thanked Emma for hitting her up and recognizing that her behavior was not that of an ally. She said, I will leave the line open to follow up on your desire to do better and support social justice causes with your platform. But clearly, a lot of fans have a hard time believing that she was genuinely sorry for making those horrible comments in the first place. Moving on, Kim Kardashian just said something that Kourtney Kardashian really, really did not want to hear. The sisters were fighting once again in the season 4 premiere of The Kardashians, when they were watching edits from their arguments in the previous season. And right away, you could tell that Kourtney was getting fired up. She said, it makes me not want to be around, and that's totally your choice and decision. I just think we should have a conversation about it because nothing happened at the wedding. Nothing was a conversation at the wedding. Then they go back and forth about last season's argument over Kim's campaign with Dolce & Gabbana. Courtney then said that Kim has an egotistical, selfish mind, and in response, she said that her sister is just different now. Quote, you're just different. You hate us, you're a different person, we all talk about it. Then Courtney said, why, because I don't need you guys anymore? I don't need to be a part of it. And this is when things got really, really heated, because Kim said that all of Courtney's friends have called her to complain about her. She said, we were all concerned, we all think that you're just really not happy. Courtney then insisted that she does in fact have a happy life, but the happiness only comes in when she finally gets away from her family. So the conversation here takes a big turn when Kim tells her that her own kids have even come to her with problems that they have with how she is. And that's really the sentence that seems to break Courtney because she completely snaps. She tells Kim, is that helpful? You're like adding it into a fight to have a side like it's you and my friends and my kids and everyone against me. Like you're just an effing witch and I hate you. So this fight was pure and not a chaos and 
just goes to show how strained the relationship between Kim and Courtney has become. I mean, it's nothing short of toxic. So their last fight happened when Courtney got upset that Kim was doing the Dolce and Gabbana show. In the scene, she was sitting across from Kendall and talking about Kim's role in the show. She then puts her face in her hands and starts to cry, saying she sees it as a dollar sign. Sorry, it just upsets me. Because it's not just about business. It's legit copying my wedding. Later on in the interview, Kim asks her if she's mad, and she seems to genuinely be thrown off by the whole question. The issue between Kim and Courtney started at her wedding to Travis Barker. So Dolce & Gabbana designed her wedding dress when she was married to him for a third time in May of 2022. Shortly after their wedding, Kim created a collaboration with them, and she made a very memorable appearance at their show during Milan Fashion Week. Then in a confessional, Courtney said, my sister used my wedding as a business opportunity. So she thinks that Kim stole some of her limelight just to be able to profit off of that same brand. And at this point, Kendall seemed to side with Courtney because she said that her wedding vibes were stripped from her, whereas Kim had no idea how they even came to this conclusion. She said, I'm really confused at how this narrative came into her head. I couldn't have been any more mindful. I said, don't do anything Courtney wore to her wedding. But apparently things got so bad that Courtney removed herself from all four of their family group chat, which means that she was genuinely really upset about this whole collaboration. Thankfully, Kim did speak a little bit about this fight recently, and she said that she and Courtney have smoothed things over. Quote, we've been there before and we'll always be okay. We're always family. That's just how we were raised. So it turns out that the actual show created a lot of these arguments between them. Kim said, you film it, you think you're all good, we make up, and then you edit it. And I'm seeing all these things that she said behind my back. And she's saying all these things that I'm saying behind her back. And the tension rises all over again. It gets really tricky and it gets really emotional. But at the end of the day, we still love sharing our life. So hopefully that's just what's going to happen this time around as well. When it comes to their show, some of their fights are very clearly just made up for the cameras. But sometimes you can actually tell that the sisters have real beef with each other. And that's when things get really interesting. Speaking of cameras and Kim Kardashian, the new season of American Horror Story is turning out to be pretty scandalous. For some reason, the writers have decided to take shots at Olivia Wilde and accused her of gaslighting people over the Don't Worry Darling press tour drama. The AHS story follows Emma Roberts' Anna, who is an actress desperate to have a baby and an Oscar. Alongside her is Kim Kardashian, who plays Siobhan, her publicist, and she is helping her through it and attempting to manage her public image along the way. So in episode two, Anna experiences a horrific vomiting episode on stage while accepting a Gotham Award. Mortified and panicking about what her next move will be, she looks to Siobhan for help. She then gets in full Kris Jenner mode and suggests that they pull a wild card. While the Don't Worry Darling premiere is not mentioned by name, it's not hard to see exactly what they're referring to. She literally says, we are going to pull a wild card as in Olivia Wilde. Siobhan explains it by saying, don't mention what happened and wait until everyone forgets. Slash low-key gaslight people that do ask and make them think that they're the problem because, you know, sexism. So for those who aren't well-versed on the Don't Worry Darling drama, here's basically what happened. Reports of conflict between Olivia and the film's lead Florence Pugh came out and that was seemingly fueled by the fact that Olivia and Harry Styles started dating during filming. Rumors then started circulating that Olivia was not always present on set because of her relationship with Harry and the fact that Florence did nothing to promote the film added even more fuel to the fire. All the rumors then led to a huge amount of backlash towards Olivia on social media which many people claimed was rooted in sexism. During the film's press tour she vaguely addressed the barrage of questions about some of the rumors but she mostly just ignored it all. And now, over a year after it all happened, AHS is shading the hell out of Olivia's response, and it's hilarious. Unsurprisingly, people have some thoughts about what the show decided to do. They tweeted things like, Kim K's Olivia Wildline on AHS Delicate shocked me, and play the Olivia Wild card. Hook up with an actor in a movie we're directing while neglecting the movie itself. But of course, not everyone joined in on the hate train. There were also a lot of people coming to her defense. One person criticized the writers for dragging a woman who's already been relentlessly publicly shamed, all just to get some headlines for the show. To add to that, they insinuated that sexism is overused as a justification. So there's really no doubt that the line was a little problematic. From a social media standpoint, it definitely worked. There are now more people talking about American Horror Story than ever before. And realistically, we all know that the show kind of went downhill after season three. So it's not that surprising that the writers are willing to do pretty much anything to get people hyped for this season. That's probably why they cast Kim Kardashian as well. Number 10, Die hit suppressant lollipops. The reality star came under fire for promoting Flat Tummy Co's appetite suppressant lollipops to her millions of Instagram followers. She posted a picture of herself with the Diet Aid candy and wrote, they're literally unreal. While Kim has posted sponsored ads for weight loss products before, things like meal replacement shakes, the whole appetite suppressant thing falls in 
into a different, far more contentious category. The lollipops contain satyriol, which is an extract from natural plants that is said to control cravings, food intake, and weight. But while the active ingredient is technically safe, many nutrition experts agree that appetite suppressants are a short-term, ultimately ineffective diet strategy that can promote harmful eating habits and exacerbate already existing disorders. And the fact that the product comes in lollipop form seems like it's geared towards a younger consumer, which just makes it all the more troubling. Manhattan-based nutritionist Maria Marlowe criticized the move and said, Kim is an incredible marketer and brander, and many young women look up to her, but this is sending the wrong messages, that being hungry is bad, that our bodies need to be controlled, that our route to an ideal body comes in candy form. Not only that, but relying on a suppressant is a distraction from focusing on a healthy diet and exercise. So yes, it's not a great option in the long term. Number nine, damaging Marilyn Monroe's dress. Although Kim is used to making questionable fashion choices, many felt that she sank to a new low when she decided to wear the famous Marilyn dress. This historical item was actually worn by Marilyn Monroe herself while she was singing happy birthday to President Kennedy in 1962. It was lent out to her by Ripley's Museum. Scott Fortner, a collector who shared photos of the dress in a blog post after Kim had returned it, said that the dress appeared to show stretched fabric and missing crystals on the back. Not only that, but while being interviewed on the red carpet, Kim said that when she first tried the dress on, it didn't actually fit her. So to ensure that the delicate fabric wouldn't tear, she dropped 16 pounds ahead of the event in order to squeeze into it. She then changed into a replica once she got to the entrance of the party because she couldn't walk up the museum steps of the Met Gala without ripping the original. But the fact that she was even allowed to wear it was enough to anger fans everywhere. It was bought by the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in a 2016 auction for $4.8 million, and it's usually kept in a darkened, temperature-controlled vault at 40 to 50 percent humidity to preserve the delicate fabric. So of course people were fuming that Kim permanently damaged the dress, especially because when you consider the design of it, the fabric is quite literally irreparable. Number 8, the 72-day marriage. Kim's union with NBA player Chris Humphreys went down in history as one of the shortest marriages in Hollywood. This led fans to question whether or not it was made for TV, especially after the two-part E special called Kim's Fairy Tale Wedding. The Los Angeles Times even reported that Kim had only married him to increase ratings on the show. But in 2017, the reality star admitted to Andy Cohen that she knew the marriage was doomed from the beginning. It turns out that she only rushed into it because of the pressure of turning 30. There were also signs that their marriage was going to end quickly. A few days before Kim divorced Chris on date 68, the couple were spotted arguing in their car while they were out on a dinner date in Hollywood. They were photographed heading back to Kim's car and you could visibly see the tension in the air. Chris looked fed up and Kim was giving him the death stare while yelling and waving her hands. This was a very public fight and it was indicative that their relationship was on the rocks. In the divorce, Chris asked for a $7 million settlement, otherwise he threatened to make Kim go through a very ugly public trial. But he ended up walking away with literally nothing. Number 7, Lying About the tape. Last September, Kris Jenner went on the Late Late Show with James Corden, where she was strapped to a lie detector test and interviewed about the infamous tape that was released in 2007 of Kim Kardashian and Ray J. Kris denied the years-long speculation that she was involved in its production. And once the results came back, it seemed as though she was telling the truth. Of course, Kim kept up this narrative too, but neither of them expected Ray J to respond to the interview. He appeared on Instagram Live with a full presentation to prove that she was lying. He showed screenshots of text messages that Kanye had sent him asking for the original tapes because he wanted to give them back to Kim. In the messages, Kanye asks if there is a time that the two of them can talk or meet up to discuss the matter further. And in response, Ray J said, I've got two kids and a tech company. Why would I involve myself in this? I'm so past this, bro. I'm assuming you know the full story from 05, right? How it happened, who brokered the deal, who put it all together. This is when Ray J made the most shocking revelation ever. He said, Kris Jenner is the one who made us shoot the second tape in Santa Barbara. He claimed that Chris orchestrated the filming of the last tape and even watched them both to decide which one was best. Number six, buying historical artifacts. The reality star came under fire after she bought the iconic cross necklace that was worn by Princess Diana for $197,000. Four people competed in a bidding war, but Kim ended up winning the auction after five minutes. The Amethyst Cross is a 1920s pendant by luxury jewelry designer Garad, which Diana wore on many occasions. The cross-shaped pendant features large amethyst stones framed by 5.2 carat diamonds. After news of the purchase came out, Kim started trending on Twitter, and everyone was jumping in to create their very own Kim Kardashian has purchased meme as a way to make fun of all the historical artifacts that she's bought. Some of the best memes include Kim Kardashian has purchased Hilaria Baldwin's fake Spanish accent,
accent for $97,600. Another user tweeted, Kim Kardashian has purchased the well-known sailboat from The Last of Us Part 2 for $1.3 million, saying, quote, it's such an iconic part of the game. Someone else tweeted, Kim Kardashian has purchased an Olympic gold medal for $10. And they quote Kim as saying, I just did what had to be done. Number five, lottery scam. Kim and Scott Distick were being sued for $40 million after they were accused of hatching a contest scam and fooling innocent people. The lawsuit alleges that the two of them created a fake lottery in 2020 and announced that the winner will get $100,000 and two first class tickets to LA as well as a three night stay in Beverly Hills and they could shop like Kim. But turned out this was all fake. The filing claims that Kim and Scott worked with an Australian company called Curated to sell the personal information of the players to advertisers. Apparently the winners of the contest were announced but their Instagram handles were quickly made private which raised a few red flags. The people that did enter the contest and lost were then invaded by hundreds of advertisers soliciting them with potentially offensive and unwanted content. However the Australian company has said that the contest is legitimate and that there is legal paperwork to back it even claiming that the winners have received their prizes. So far both Kim and Scott have yet to comment on that lawsuit. Number four stolen wages. Kim has been sued by members of her Hidden Hill staff for alleged unpaid wages which she seemingly denied. Her maintenance and cleaning crews are the ones who have joint forces to file a lawsuit against her. According to TMZ, Kim's employees chose to take legal action after she allegedly failed to pay wages, provide meal breaks and cover expenses, in addition to allegedly withholding 10% of their money for taxes without reporting their employment to tax authorities. The legal documents show that the allegations came from seven staffers who worked for her at her Hidden Hills home and they claimed that they were hired as full-time employees. In the documents, the workers specifically alleged that they were not given pay stubs and were not paid on a regular schedule. They were also not provided with a system to record their hours, meaning that they would not get paid for all of their hours, including overtime. However, Kim believes that she is not the one to blame for their issues, and she claims that she hired a third-party vendor to tackle the maintenance and cleaning services. So it's most likely that she'll get off the hook for this one. Number three, trademark infringement. Sydney Lunsford, the owner of esthetician studio Beauty Concepts, claims to have owned an SKKN trademark since 2018, which she feels is very similar to Kim's new SKKN skincare brand. So the reality star got sued for trademark infringement. Cindy claimed that her own company conducted business continuously under that name since at least August of 2018. But in a statement to page six, Kim's lawyer Michael Rhodes says that the lawsuit is nothing more than a shakedown effort and that it's less about trademark law and more of a cash grab. He said, this lawsuit is not what it seems. We applaud Miss Lunsford for being a small business owner and following her dreams, but that doesn't give her the right to wrongfully claim that we've done something wrong. And because Sydney's SKKN studio was a one-person appointment only shop that offers facials from a single location with no signage, it's likely that she doesn't have enough to prove her case. Number two, crying over a lost earring. The Kardashians have been on some pretty fancy vacations over the years, but they haven't always had the best of luck when they've traveled. Kim was famously robbed in a Paris hotel room in 2016, and she had to hand over millions of dollars worth of jewelry to armed intruders. At that point, many fans sympathized with her and what would have been a horrible experience. But at other moments, she became the butt of the joke. Well, like when she cried like a baby over losing an earring in the ocean. She was visiting Bora Bora at the time along with her ex-husband Chris Humphreys. During an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, he tosses her into the ocean before she has the chance to remove a pair of diamond studs worth $75,000 a piece. When she realizes one is missing, she breaks down in tears. And that's when Courtney comes through with an iconic response. She says, Kim, there's people that are dying. The missing earring was eventually found, but Kim's reaction would go on to last forever in the form of a meme. And coming in at number one, cultural appropriation. Kim has long been accused of using other cultures as a part of her brand and identity, leveraging it for the creation of a fashion empire. She's been called out for this many times. She wore a style of Fulani braids which have roots in West Africa and attributed the style to Bo Derek. Speaking to Jeremy O'Harris for ID Magazine, Kim said, obviously I would never do anything to appropriate any culture, but I have in the past got backlash from putting my hair in braids and I understand that. Honestly, a lot of the time it comes from my daughter asking us to do matching hair. On the other hand, she also insists that she's had certain conversations with North about which hairstyles they can both do. Kim has also been accused of deliberately darkening her skin for a 2017 KKW beauty campaign. In response, she told the New York Times that she would obviously never want to offend anyone and she later ended up replacing those photos. But even her shapewear line Skims has come under fire for cultural appropriation ahead of its launch. In the end though, it found a strong base of customers who wanted Kim's hourglass shape for themselves.